Hey everybody, welcome back to Stamping School. This week I'm working with the Fresh Flowers stamp set and the new dies that go with it. This month is the Perfect Partners promotion with Stampin' Up. We have done the Apple Blossom dies a few weeks ago and we did the Piggies last week. This week I am using the Fresh Cut stems. So for a limited time only, there are dies that will coordinate with the stamp set that's in the annual catalog, page 65. It's a pretty stamp set. There are no sentiments with it. I like how there's one silhouette with it and I like a nice big open flower that you can color or not color. And the limited die set comes with 12 pieces. You get these big ones that will cut out this image, this one, and this one, and this little guy right here. And then also they give you some other ones, one, like a zigzag edge right here with some little dots in it. There's these three little flowers and a stem, which I guess you could layer those on, I would assume. They kind of look like butterflies at first, but they're little flowers. Two leaves that are open. And again, they're meant to coordinate with these. This one right here actually does go right on top of that pretty well, but not these. So definitely, well, I guess you could do it artistically, you could. It really goes more with this one and this one, but they're really meant to be used as layering on top. They get this, this pretty little baby's breath looking thing right here. <laughs> I don't know what you call these. This is like a pod flower and then this little open flower. So you get quite a few dies to extend this. So limited time only for the month of September while supplies last. And the stamp set is available until next summer in the annual catalog. I was feeling like doing a vintage card today. This kind of evolved. I was playing around with coloring that big flower stamp and then I just decided to emboss it in white and I did that on blue first, and then I just didn't like it. And then I remembered the Abigail Rose papers, and I said, ah, oh, that's what I wanna do. I hadn't used them yet. If you like the shabby chic vintage kind of look, this is beautiful paper. It's called Abigail Rose, it's in the annual catalog. It has crumb cakes and Sahara sand and soft suede and a little bit of espresso and a touch of pink. It is so pretty, it's 12 by 12 sheets. Look at this one. I love this one. It has just a touch of pink in it. It just reminds me of those old registers from the 1800s. Oh, here's the other side. It's, it has a vanilla, but some white also. You can kind of tell the difference between. There's a little vanilla and white in each one. I love this print. Kind of looks like it's burlap almost. The other side. Same with this one, a little burlap feel to it. See the texture in there? I mean, it's printed texture, it's smooth. That one has a little gray in it. Love this one. Ah, oh, so pretty. And there's that petal pink ticking on the back. This one you can color if you want to. And then that little baby print on the back side. So I like to mix and match patterns, so I chose three patterns to kind of layer up on this. All right, let's do the embossing first on the flowers. Soft suede, I'm gonna get out my little embossing kit here. I am loving this thing. You don't really need it to emboss. You don't have to have the tray. You can use a paper plate or a coffee filter or whatever like we used to do in the day, but it sure is nice and handy. Got your embossing buddy that comes with it that gets rid of all the static stuff. I also, give a little wipe inside here just so that my embossing powder will come out quickly when I put it back. I'm using my sticky Versamark pad, which is pretty clear. You're not gonna see a whole lot. Make sure it's juicy enough. You can buy the refills for it. People say, my embossing powder does not stick. And I say, well, you gotta re-ink your embossing pad. And that usually does it. All right, good pressure, it's a big one and white embossing powder. Be generous, get it all, tap off the excess, check it out, make sure you don't have any spots that are missing. 
Now we're going to be cutting this out with the die, so I don't worry too much about the flyaways. If you have the old one from years ago, it has like a rubber plug in it. This has a screw at the bottom, which is I really, really like. Ooh, there's a little butterfly in there. And it comes with a little brush to kind of help it get down in there. This is going to be great for the holidays, gifts. I've already bought one for someone <laughs> who needs it. Comes in a nice box too, which is kind of nice. And it comes with these tweezers, which are amazing. They don't get hot when you try to heat up your paper. So heat tool and remember with embossing, what you want to do is not just do this all over the place, be really methodical so you don't miss a spot. White is so pretty. Now if you heat it too long, it turns yellow. And not a pretty yellow, like a scorched yellow. <laughs> All right, five seconds, it's cool enough to touch. And then we're gonna cut it out in the machine. I didn't even do anything else to it on the card, except I did add some Wink Stella. We'll do that at the end. All right, let's do our layers. Here is just a regular top fold card, four and a quarter by 11, scored at five and a half inches. Of course, you could do a side fold, it doesn't really matter. I know that someone is gonna tell me that I'm wasting paper, and maybe I am, it's possible. But what you can do if you want to you know, save on your paper is you can put one inch on one side and two inches or one and a half inches on the other side. I'm gonna trim that down slightly. There, I'm gonna trim that little edge off. This paper is just so pretty by itself. Look, you just put a, a pretty sentiment and some ribbon and you're done. So pretty. But I wanted to mix these patterns up. So this is what I meant by, if you really wanted to say paper, you could. You could put like a, a one inch strip or a, you know, a three quarter inch strip and a two inch strip and save that other strip for something if you really had to make it stretch. Now I'm bringing in this brush gold. This, this gold is from that Trio 12 by 12 pack and they just gave it away free during celebration. So I hope you guys got this one. It's a whole pack of 12 by 12 and there's three different colors. There's like a copper and then there's like a, almost like a cool gold, brush gold and like a warmer brush gold. So I'm gonna use the cooler, lighter color one. And I ran it through this die right here and you know, if, if you want to, there's a lot of little confetti pieces that get stuck in here that's gold. If you had the patience, you could glue all these little guys on somewhere, but you don't. <laughs> They're too small. So here's that edge. We've had this before in another die set. I'm pretty sure I recognize something like this. But it's pretty. So on the edge of this, we're gonna glue, make sure this is in the right position, right here. Put a little glue right here. And line it up where you want it. I just want a few of the teeth showing. I don't want the whole thing showing. Just a little bit right there. There was a time many years ago when we sponged everything. We sponged all the edges, we sponged all of these edges and all of the edges of the tag and everywhere. You know, and if you want to do that and make it a little more shabby chic, go for it. These days, I tend to just leave it looking a little cleaner, a little more modern, but I almost sponged it. I almost did it. Now, this one, I'm gonna wait until I get this middle piece down. So I had used the decal on that notebook paper that's in the Abigail Rose paper set. And then I thought, well, how would it look if I did this, which is a different tag, or a little stitch scallop right here. And I think, I think I'm gonna do this one. I know the lines are going in the wrong direction, but I don't think it's really gonna matter a whole lot. And I think it's still gonna layer nicely, as long as I've got room for the flowers, and I do. Yeah, I'm gonna try it. It's a little bit smaller than this, but I think it's gonna work. Right, so a little bit of glue on this side. 
And I'm just gonna make sure that it's a nice border all the way around. Oh, and you know, this has ribbon back here and I'm gonna try a different ribbon because this is smaller. So I'm gonna try this natural ribbon, which kind of reminds me of a bandage. Let's do that first. I love the texture. It's something tactile. People can, you know, touch it and say, ooh, there's ribbon on there. It's a little bit harder with that scallop edge to wrap this around, but let's see if we can make it happen. It's pretty, and it's vanilla, so it kind of blends in nicely, but still gives it a little bit of texture in there. This natural ribbon is the one that I used on the bigger card, which is pretty. It's got that pretty wheat crumb cake color. Back to layering this little piece. Right, adhesive all over, and there, and that's how we're gonna layer those. It's actually four patterns, one, two, three, four. As long as you're going large to small, large to small, it, it works. Um, this one is gonna go on with dimensionals. Four of those little pop-up dimensionals right here. It's a little small, but I kinda like the way it hangs over. You still see the ribbon in here. Now this guy, I tucked in down here. I'm gonna lift that up and just tuck it in. So he's glued down here with the dimensional, but he's kinda free floating right there. The tag, for the tag I used watercolor paper because white was too white and vanilla was too vanilla and I wanted something right in between, which is watercolor paper. The stamps that I used in the annual catalog called Nature's Harvest and I love the sentiments in here. It's very tiny though. I'll show you what I did on the inside. But it says a reminder to never forget how much you mean to me and so many others. It's very pretty. I just like the vintage font in it. So I created a little tag, but cut off the edge. And this is three quarters of an inch is what it ended up being. And let's do right, cut a little snip here. Snip, snip and then punched a little hole. <laughs> this crocodile is gonna be overkill for this, but I, it's right here and I needed a little hole, a little crooked hole. All right, this next question was from Tina. She said, what is the difference between the neutral twines and linen thread? And there is a difference. So Stampin' Up! sells these five twines. They're neutral twines. They're in the annual catalog. They sell five in a package. I wish they were separate, but they're not. But it's actually um, a soft twine, like a baker's twine is what it is. So there's five of these in the different colors. Now they don't come on rolls, they come on like twine rolls, I believe. But I had extra of these. When my ribbon runs out, I save them and I put them on here. So to me, it's just easier to unroll it that way. But here they are right here. And it is a baker's twine, whereas linen thread is really a thread. It's, it's, um, it's a little bit thinner if you compare the two. This is softer and a little bit bigger. So I started with ivory and then I tried white and I tried, I tried linen thread. I tied this probably four times and I ended up settling on the crumb cake twine. I tied bows. I, <laughs> I tried all sorts of different things before I finally just said, you know what? I'm just going to let it be a tag. So here's what I did. I'm going to take about six inches and fold it in half. And then the loopy end goes through the hole and then open that up and then put the tails through right here. Just like that. I'm a little disappointed my hole is so crooked, but maybe I'll put a butterfly on it or something. A few dimensionals to hold it in place. And there it is. So what I did with these, I don't know if you can see here, but I just tied a knot in the bottom and then let them fray. I kind of just like the the little the frayed look on them. Tied a knot, trimmed it off, and then just <laughs> roughed it up a little bit. Now I scattered on a few of those little gold butterflies. So my gold is repeating a few times. I've got gold and gold and gold. I took some Wink Stella, 
And actually it's better if you do it before you put that on there because the Wink Stella can make it blur a little bit. Gonna get it going and flick some of that all over. And just give it a little shine. And you can also kind of dot the middles of the flowers so they have a little glisten to them. Let me show you the inside. I like the inside too. Took that printed antique paper from the Abigail Rose set. And right here, I stamped this flower. So this flower here I stamped in soft suede and I stamped all the sentiments in soft suede. I had to stamp this one twice, so I stamped it here and then I stamped it again and then covered up the overlap because you can see the size. I wanted it a little bit taller on there. And then I added some more of that weavy ribbon and a little bit more thread. And it's a really little font, but it came out. So that's it. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. See it, learn it, stamp it.